Hello everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with another Contrast Plus terrain painting tutorial, and today we are painting the Moor Pit. Yes, this wonderful centerpiece of terrain. It comes to us from the Hunter and Hunted Warcry set, and it has been sent to me early by Games Workshop to build up and paint for all of you, and that is exactly what we are going to be doing today. Now this guy is huge, it's very, very big, but we're going to break it down into its constituent parts, and then it's going to be pretty easy to conquer. And we're going to be painting it, of course, in a contrast plus style. So it's been primed in grey here, and the colour we're going to be using first is Wildwood. And we're going to be applying this over the top of all of the soil. So we've got areas of soil down here, for example. And we're just going to start getting this all over. And you don't really have to worry too much about kind of coffee staining or having too much paint on your brush, for example when you're painting something of this size, especially with terrain, because, well, no one's gonna look at it too closely, but also they are kind of really nicely textured in such a way where you can just get away with really slapping that paint on there. Now I'm kind of obviously being a little bit precise because to cut down on kind of having to recover things, Makes sense. So, for example, we've got a little skull there, which I don't want to have to go in and redo with Grace here for later. However, for the rest of it, we can just start making our way around the model. Just like this. And there's not actually tons and tons of, kind of soil on this one. It might look initially like there is quite a lot, but there actually isn't. It kind of sticks around here, a little bit round here, and there's some stuff that's in and around the underside of that kind of large skull up there. But otherwise, Mostly under control. You just want to make your way around like this. And then once it's done, we'll come back. So with all that wild wood applied all the way around, as you can see, what we're then going to do is we're going to take a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Black Legion and Lamia Medium. And we're going to apply this over top of all of the rock. Now it will come out quite dark at first, but as it starts to dry, you'll notice it's got this kind of brownier texture to it. is perfect for what we want. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Mechanica Standard Grey, and I've got a large dry brush here. And what we're going to do is we're going to start stippling this across the facings of these rocks. And we want to build this up quite 
quite heavily. Just like this sort of thing. So with that Mechanica's standard grey dry brush applied, well, stippling, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some administratum grey and we're going to very gently dry brush this over the top of all of our rock. So with that done, we've got some pretty cool looking rocks all the way around. So what we're going to do now is going to move on to the fleshy bit in the middle. And the colour we're going to be using for this is some Magos Purple. So I'm just going to start down here in the middle. I'm going to start applying this over the top. Just like this. Now don't worry if you get this over the top of the teeth. That's all okay. If anything, it's just easier if you do the teeth as well at this point. But just take your time here. Work your way around all of this fleshy maw. And then once it's done, we'll come back. So with that Magos purple all applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some wraith bone and we're going to use this to dry brush over the top of all of the flesh. And so with that then done, we're going to take some Reichland Flesh Shade and we're going to apply this over the top. What you should see is a really interesting kind of inflamed skin. With the Magos Purple. Providing some really cool deep deep shading and the wraith bone providing the high point.
And with all of that Reichland flesh shade now applied, we're going to take some Black Legion and we're going to apply this over the top of all of the teeth. So with all of that Black Legion applied, just whilst we're waiting for all of it to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Skeleton Horde and we're going to apply this over the top of all the bones and skulls. It's over pretty much every single one of our remaining details, excluding the chains. So with all of that skeleton horde applied, as you can see, we're very nearly there with all of our base coats. So what we're going to do is we're gonna keep doing base coats and we're gonna take some rattling grime. I'm gonna use this to paint in the sort of cabling. So with that rattling grime all applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some wildwood and we're going to use this to kind of colour in any of the little gaps and scars in the bones. So with all of that wild wood applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to apply our final base coat, which is going to be some thinned down iron warriors. I'm going to apply this over the top of the chains, here and here. That Iron Warrior is all applied, we're then going to use some Nuln Oil just to shade it down a bit. And with that, our more pit is now what I would call a war hipster battle ready, and it's looking pretty cool. However, we're just gonna add a couple of dry brushes here to finish it off and really just make it a nice impressive piece. And the first of these is going to be some administratum gray, and we're gonna use this to 
to dry brush all of those teeth. We're just looking to catch the edges. Just like this sort of thing. So with that administratum grey all applied, we're then going to apply our final dry brush, which is of course going to be some tyrant skull. And we're going to do this over the top of pretty much the entire miniature. So we want to go a little bit heavier on the brown and the bone, because they haven't been highlighted yet. But when it gets to the rocks and things, we can add a little bit of a dusting of this towards the top. Just like this sort of thing. And there we have it. Our moor pit is all finished. I do really enjoy painting terrain. It's not something I ever think I'm going to like doing, but then I do it and it's a really good time. It's just one of those things, isn't it? Eh? <laughs> this one's pretty fun as well. I mean, it's a really cool terrain piece. It's very, very big as well. So it can act as a really cool centerpiece for all of your future war cry engagements. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel and you'd like to support me further, you absolutely can do so by heading to patreon.com forward slash warhipster, just like all of these wonderful, amazing people have done. And alternatively, you could become a YouTube channel member by clicking on the join button below, exactly like these fabulous folks have done scrolling up on the screen before you. There are so many of you out there that it really takes my breath away and I cannot thank you enough for everything you do as without you I wouldn't be able to keep making these Contrast Plus videos. And if you really like this video and you want to send me a little thanks just click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and to make sure you stay up to date don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.